It's talking about blossoms themselves. But you can also use it as a verb, meaning the process of flowering. So now I want to give you some synonyms, because you know I like to, to do that. I like to give you synonyms so you can pick what is it that God is saying to you. So another word for blooming is to thrive. Are you thriving? Are you expecting to flourish? Another word is to be fortunate. Don't you want to be fortunate? Another word is do all right for. Bloom, bear fruit. Be enriched. Become wealthy. Be fine, a word that I don't use, be fine and dandy. Be very happy. Bloom. So I want to challenge you today to fight for your, your wild and wonderful, beautiful life. You got to fight for your life. You have to bloom right in the place where you are. You have to process all that's going on, even in the news, in the, in the readings, on social media, the, the television, what people have said or not said. There's, there's regular news, there's fake news, but I'm saying today that this is still our season to bloom. Amen? So you can't really burden yourself with what's going on. You have to now focus on what is God saying to me so that I can bloom in whatever the decisions are, whatever the new thing he has for me, it is time to bloom. Let's go to the scripture. Romans 8, 1. This is amplified. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as their personal Lord and Savior. So you don't need to beat up on yourself and condemn yourself for even anything that you did in these past two months that was not um, moving you forward. Start right now. It's time to bloom. It's time to bloom. It's time to bloom. So do not be guilty. Do not get depressed. Do not um, beat yourself up for some decisions you made. Start right now and say, you know what? I forgive myself. It's time to move forward. It's time to bloom. Let's continue. Either we're going to take the, the word of God for what it says, or, we, or, or we're just not who we say we are. Think about it. His word does not come back void. His word isn't empty. What has God told you? Go back to your journals. Go back to some of the things that you wrote down. Go back to some of the things you highlighted in a Bible or highlighted in a Bible app. Go back and reread those things again because it's time to bloom. Do not be discouraged. Do not be dismayed because the Lord thy God is with you. He's with you wherever you go. But it's time to flourish. It's time to thrive. It's time to reevaluate where you are and where you're going. Amen? I want to go to Noah because this is a pure word service. So there's going to be a lot of scripture tonight because I need you to, to know what God is saying in his word. So Genesis chapter 8. Verses 15 to 17 in the message version. God spoke to Noah. He said, leave the ship, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives, and take all the animals with you, the whole menagerie of birds and mammals and crawling creatures, all that brimming prodigy of life so they can reproduce and flourish on the earth. So even when, we, when Noah was locked in, when it was time to go out, he didn't go out sad, he didn't go out concerned. And I know in New York City, our, our pause is extended, but it's a pause, it's not a stop. It's a pause, it doesn't mean don't grow. It's a pause, it, it's not like we under a curfew. We just have to be mindful and respect each other and just follow some of these guidelines, but it's a pause, it's not an end. So I speak into your life even now, it's a pause, it's not a stop. There's no period at the end of this. So we have more time to continue to grow and to develop and to bloom into all that God has for us. So when Noah left, Noah came out the ark, he said, go out and multiply. What do you, 
What, what is the thing that you want to multiply? What is the thing that you want to grow? What are you preparing that when it's time to go out that you, you have multiplied, you have increased, you have bloomed? This is about bloom. This is not about doom. We have a hope and a future. And those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, this is your time to, to bloom in that area. This is your time to accept him as your Lord. This is your time to accept him as your Savior. I'm encouraging you tonight. It's time to thrive. It's time to bloom. I, um, we, I'll give a testimony. This past week, uh, someone called me um, while I was walking, and she said to me, hello. Uh, I, um, I called this number. I said, well, how do you get the number? She said, well, two years ago, some ladies gave me a, a Bible in the park, and this number was on it, and I'm home, and I was wondering if you knew where I could get food. So this was like the uh, day before yesterday, I think it was. And um, I said, well, you know, we do have like some goods that we put together for people that are in need. So can you imagine that a Bible from two years ago decided to bloom to, into a phone call so that we could make a delivery to a household of an elderly woman, two elderly people in, in our community, and we were able to feed them. So I'm saying to you, some of the stuff you did two years ago is getting ready to bloom right now. I, who, I didn't know that the Bible was still in our house. She didn't know me, but she, she realized that just because of the, the care and the love that two women gave in a park, that she said, you know, they were so kind let me try this number because I need food. So I, that testimony is just to encourage you that some of the things that you've done in the past, that stuff is just getting ready now to bloom. It's getting ready now just to pick up. So do not get weary in doing well because if you do well, God will bless you. Do not change during this season because you're locked in that you're going to save everything here for yourself. I'm only going to do things for me. I have to protect myself. That's not God's way. Jesus paid a price so that we could have eternal life. And there are some prices that we have to pay. And what a blessing it was to leave the food at the door and just and, and then you know ring the doorbell and stay away and then her waving, like, thank you. Can you imagine that two years ago a Bible would feed her two years later with a card on it? So I'm encouraging you. Blooming is not about put a seed in the ground. And oh, here's my plant in a, tomorrow. The blooming, you gotta let the seed ger germinate. You gotta allow it to, to connect with the ground. You gotta let it take time to take root. So right now I'm speaking into your life. I'm encouraging you. Allow things to take root. Don't rush your process. I know that it seems long. And I know you get tired, but don't rush, rush the process. I used to, uh, when I was in college, you know, you don't want to read all the book. So you, there was something we used to buy. I don't know if they have it still. Now, Cliff Notes. So you get Cliff Notes, which give you like a summary of the book. But you miss so many steps. You miss so many pieces. And then when the test come, oh my gosh, that wasn't in the Cliff Notes. So in this season, we have to do everything step by step. Don't miss a step. Don't skip over anything because God wants to bloom you in such a way that there will be no going back. Amen? So say that to yourself. There's no going back. Uh, today I was um, thinking to myself that as you move forward, stop looking back. As you are moving forward, sometimes we, we kind of look back to see, like uh, in the Bible, Saul's wife, and you miss I mean, Lot's wife, you miss what you're supposed to be seeing. So in this season, keep your eyes focused so you can boom. I have a story I wanted to read you because I was doing some history reading um, this week. And um, I want to share this with you because I want to encourage you tonight that it's our time to bloom. I don't care when they extend the date. I don't I don't. I, I'm not concerned about that. I, all I'm concerned is about the lives that are lost, the people that we have to pray for and encourage, and the families that are needed. But if, if, the, if there's an extension, then there's still more things for us to do as we continue to bloom. Amen? So this story is um, about Joan of Arc, and I don't want to rush it. 
Because that's why I couldn't talk fast, right? So say, Pastor, slow down. So this is a woman of courage. Amen? So Joan of Arc, she simply loved God. She received, she never received any theological training and knew very little about the official doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. The only church in France at that time. All Joan knew was that when she went to the Mass, God met her there. Joan knew God loved to spend time with him and would do anything for him. Is that you? That you spend time with him and you would do anything for him? So in the summer, listen to this, in the summer of 1425, when she was 13, Joan experienced her first heavenly visitation, a blaze of bright light accompanied by a voice. Over the course of three years, she had dreams of horses running in a battle and of herself being led away with an army of men. During this time, she gradually became aware of the call of God on her life. So in this, in this blooming time, it's a gradual coming, becoming aware. Don't rush it. So he seemed to be telling her that she was to go to the aid of the disinherited Charles, the true king of France, and drive the English away from Orleans and out of the country and lead the procession to see Charles enthroned. At first, she resisted. I'm just a girl. Is that you? I'm just a guy. I just, I just accepted Jesus last week. I'm divorced. I'm single. But that's not what God is saying. He's saying you can bloom. Let's continue with Joan's story. So she said, I'm just a girl. I have no education. Is that you? You don't have any education, so you think God can't use you? That's not true. She said, I don't have, I have no training in military skills. So she didn't go to basic training. She didn't go to an army. Who's, she said, who's going to listen to me? Whoever God puts before you, speak, they will listen. She said, her, voice, her voices became more and more insistent. By May, and it's just so funny, we admit, by May 1428, Joan was convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was leading her to go to Charles' aid. She loved God so much that she would go anywhere and do anything to fulfill his desire. Is that us? Well, if, if, if God tells us to go somewhere, will we go? If he tells us, even in this season, that they even on a pause, that he's saying, go out and see a neighbor or pray for a neighbor, are we willing to go? Are we willing to listen to what the, um, the voice of the Lord is saying? Or are we going to listen to the voice of man? So this is, this is your season to bloom, to know God's voice for yourself. I am encouraging you. This is your time to tune up your ears, get your Q-tips, and know God's voice for yourself. Not everyone's voice is God's voice. Amen? So let me continue the story. So she believed that God was true and that he would back her up in everything that he called her to do. And that's a, this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask him anything, he does it for us. Do you realize that God wants to back you up? If he gives you a word, he's going to see it to pass. And some things are done in stages. And at my age, I, I've come to a place that I set goals based on the age I'm going to versus I'm going to do this. So younger people are set goals. Three months, I'll do this. In six months, I'll do that. But I've started as I've gotten more mature to say, by 60, I would have accomplished this. By 62, and sometimes we have to do these things because um, everything doesn't bloom in a year. Everything doesn't bloom in two years. But if you plant the seed and God is in it, it will grow. Amen? Let's continue Joan's story. So by April 1429, Joan and her army, can you imagine Joan has an army now? One year later, Joan has an army. Joan and her army had moved rapidly and entered the city of Orleans within a week. Say a week. Within a week. They had captured all the English forts and surrounding the city. 
Who do you say to that? Not trained. No, it, what? They probably didn't have no money. And she said she's not educated. She says she has no military experience. But when God is for you, who can be against you? With God on her side and, and, and listening to his voice intently, it's an intent thing. It's intentional. You gotta want to listen. You gotta want to spend time with her. So when you do that, within a week, let's see what God's gonna do within a week. Let's see what happens next week. I'm I'm, I'm expecting testimonies in the comments. Say within a week, things are gonna change in Jesus' name. Amen. So she captured them by what by April 1429. So that's almost like. So we started out by May 1428. She was convinced um, beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was leading her. And within a year, right, a little less than a year, April 1429, she's, she, so she gave herself some months to train, right? And then in that months of training, within a week, she was able to take over everything. So don't rush your process. You are going to bloom. Men, women, children, families, you are going to bloom in Jesus' name. So we can take courage from the simple fact that Joan was so ordinary. God uses the simple things. Simple. You don't have to make it elaborate. To blossom, you don't have to, you know, do a whole lot. You just got to surrender yourself to the Lord, and he will teach you and direct you in which way to go. He'll teach you what call to make. He'll tell you when that call should be made. But you got to attune your voice. I mean, tune your ear to his voice. So you can move. Amen? So let's continue. So by normal human standards, she had no qualifications for the mission she undertook. She had no education. She had no religious training and no leadership experience. In fact, she lived during a time when women's freedom in both church and society was, was greatly restricted. What's making the difference in Joan's life? What's going to make the difference in your life? Joan possessed the only qualification that mattered. And this is what matters. She loved God with all her heart, soul, and mind and strength. How do you bloom? You got to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. She was completely sold out. Are you sold out tonight? Is Jesus the first thing that you seek? Are we trying to blossom with things that we have needed to cut off? Are we trying to get rooted in things that we know are not the things that God wants us to do? How do we want to bloom and we make no room for him? How do we bloom? We have to make room. You have to be sold out. You have to let them know that you need them. You have to call on them. You have to spend time with them. It's like any other relationship. You got to want to want to be with him and not make it a ritual and don't make it religious, but continue to make it relationship. Rest in the Lord. Strengthen yourself. You, there's a Joan in each and every one of us, male and female. There are areas that we need to develop and there's things that we feel that we're not qualified for, but God is qualifying you. So in this season, I encourage you, do not disqualify yourself. Bloom. Bloom. But make room for Christ. Amen? So I want to encourage you tonight with that. I want to remind us he doesn't think the way we think. He said that at the beginning in Isaiah 55, 8, 11. I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. God does confound the wise with foolish things. But you're not foolish. He wants to make you wise. And he wants you to bloom. But you must make room for Christ. So if you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, this is your time. Make room for him. Because when you make room for Christ in your life, 
there's no good thing that he's going to withhold from you. Nothing he's going to let go from you. He's never going to give you things that's going to harm you. But he's always going to want to love on you and protect you. Um, trust Jesus tonight. Tell him, Father, I'm calling on you. I'm tired of doing the things I do. I want to make room. I want to bloom with you, God. I want you to be my personal savior. I want you in my life. And those of us that have family members that we, you know, we're concerned about, continue to pray. There's areas that we need to bloom in. We have to bloom in our relationship as Christians. We have to bloom in um, spending our time in his presence. We have to bloom in, in reading his word so we can get clarity in our purpose. Help us, God. We have to bloom, guess what, in resting. We've been so busy. Even in, in, in this season of you could get locked in and get so busy doing other things. And God is saying, even in this time of rest, you still have not made room for me. And the room that you make will allow you to bloom. There's no doom. Just bloom. So, Father, I thank you tonight that you are allowing every person under the sound of my voice to flourish and bloom like never before. Continue to give them ideas and dreams. We believe in you tonight, oh God. You said we can ask, we can seek, we can knock, and doors will be open. So I speak even now that the doors are open, that the ideas are there. We're open to this new thing, this new way that you're doing. We're ready to bloom with you, oh God. And we thank you that we will continue to make room. We'll make time in your presence. We'll make time for prayer. We'll make time to make phone calls and encourage others. We'll move ourselves out of the way and we'll, we'll get the joy, which is Jesus, others, and then you, ourselves. So that's how you get joy, Jesus, others, and then you. And when you put others first, you will continue to bloom. So God bless each and every one of you tonight. I want to give you a few announcements. Um, it's Mother's Day tomorrow in um, Standard Bear, New York. We're having our first Mother's Day virtual, uh, this is a virtual breakfast, but it's for women. Our Mother's Day is at um, Standard Bear have always been Mother's Day, our, our Women's Day, we do it all together, and our Father's Day, we do it as a Men's Day. So our virtual breakfast is on Zoom at 9 a.m. Um, tomorrow morning. So please have your breakfast ready at 9, and then we'll all log in. If you want to join us, you can call 718-528-2100, and we will give you the link, or you can email S B. F A C E O F F at gmail.com and we can send you the link. Amen. On Tuesday, May 12th, we'll be having our apostolic teachings um, that will continue and that will be at 7.30 p.m. Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. to 8.30. We have our pace setter intergenerational prayer call where all ages pray together. Amen. And I encourage you to download the Standard Bear New York app at church.app by Faith Connector at the App Store or the Google Play Store. And we have now started rolling out our um, Standard Bear New York YouTube, so please subscribe because you can also get the sermons there as well. So we just, God bless you and God keep you. And may he continue to shine upon you as you bloom. So enjoy your Mother's Day, mothers. And women, enjoy your day. And we look forward to eating together in the morning at 9. Amen. Love you all. God is faithful. Boom.